G'day guys, welcome back again. I am going to show you how to do a dip today. So I'm not one of these people that's going to pour paint onto just a piece of um, baking paper or silicone or something like that. I'd rather pour it onto one card, flip the other card over the top and then have two matching pieces of art that you can actually frame or do something with. So that's why I've got the two here. I'll be pouring onto one, squishing it. So these are just my thick cards that I use. Um, I think they're also called matte board or uh, what else is the other name for them? Mm, can't think now, but it's just a thick card. This one is a 660 gram. It's about oh, almost two mil thick, I think. Uh, they don't warp, my ones don't warp, so, but I do have a lot of paint on them, which I think keeps them quite flat. So, um, I am using my sand pouring medium that I use for my flip cups, this one here, three parts flow troll, two parts PVA glue, one part pouring medium, and a quarter part of water. And if you mix them up in cups, maybe three cups, two cups, one cup, a quarter of a cup, uh, or you can weigh them. Now you 300 grams, 200 grams, 100 grams, and obviously a quarter of a gram. You can do it that way, whatever you like. I'll just move it over there. And for cells, I'm going to use the 100% silicone oil. So I've got all um, global impasto paints. I've got a cool blue, which is that one there. And then I have my deep space, which is the navy, this one on the end. And I've got some Peacock, which is a pale aqua, which is that one there. And then I've got my lime that I make up. It's just uh, light green and yellow. And then I've got some white. All right. So I have mixed my paints. Three parts pouring medium to one part paint. It leaves the tiniest little mound. So not too thick leaves a tiny little mound, as I said before, it disappears. So that's the ratio for this mix. And these two on the end have got a little bit more paint, so I'll put four drops of oil in those. Actually, that one's got a little bit more as well. Four drops in the bigger ones and three drops in the smaller ones. And I'm going to do the white as well because I'm not using it as a swipe colour. So I might as well put the oil in there as well, see what happens. One, two, three, and these ones can have four. One more, there we go. All right, give them a bit of a mix in. Probably around about, you know, four or five times. One, two, three, four, five, something like that. Now, um, I'm going to once I put the paint on, I'll move these cups away and, and drag those down a little bit. But what I'm going to do is, because I want layers um, and I want the oil to come up through the different layers, I'm going to kind of do puddle pours. And see how that goes. So each little puddle will be a little bit different. So we'll do some like this. And then I'll put some lime down. And I'm going to probably use all this paint. Because I'm doing two surfaces, I am going to need quite a lot of paint. Because, you know, you want to squish the two together and open up and have enough paint to actually cover both surfaces. So you do need, I think, a little bit of extra paint. So just be aware of that when you're mixing your paint up. And I'm just blobbing these anywhere, really. We'll start with this bright blue. And then put something else on top. Might be aqua on top of that one, hey? That'll look nice. And I have got more of my darker colours because I've got two darks and then I've got three lights. So just because I don't want the pore to be too pale. And I will tilt this afterwards to cover the card. Be interesting to see how this turns out. Hey, let's put a little bit of white on top of these 
darker colours. As you know, I like my dark on my light, don't you? You would have seen enough of my videos to know that. Let's see what the white looks like first. Maybe the white underneath might bring up some pretty cells as well. We'll see. Let's put some navy on the white. They just do whatever you like, really. Whatever takes your fancy. And let's see, we haven't started with this yet, have we? I'm just going to cover the surface. If you don't use all the paint, that's okay. And let's put some of the navy on the aqua. It'll be interesting to see which combination makes the prettiest cells. Light on dark, dark on light. Maybe it doesn't make any difference at all. We need to have a little bit more of my lime. Let's put some lime here and there, just dot it around wherever we think it needs some. Maybe up there, balance it out a little bit. So no method to my madness really, just putting it wherever I feel like it. That needs a little bit more there. Let's pop a little bit of white on top of that as well. Now I'm just basically filling in holes. While I'm dipping it, slippery little thing. Okay, I think that's probably almost enough. I haven't used very much of this bright blue actually. Let's pop some of that on. like a mess. Hopefully it'll work out. This blue over here needs a little bit more on it. Nearly there. Sorry if this is a little bit boring but I want to see what happens when I layer these colours rather than just pour in my usual ribbons. do it, hey? I'm going to lose quite a lot of that paint once I start tilting. Clean up my mess. I like to have a clean workstation, clean as I go. Alright, now I can bring these back a little bit. Oh, look at those. I have little mini ring paws. Aren't they gorgeous? Little baby ring paws. Okay, so let's just tilt this. Cover as much as we can. I don't want to tilt that too much, so I'm just going to pop a little bit there. And a little bit there. So I don't want to lose all my paint that I've just put on there. So that's all covered now. Right, the exciting part. Woohoo! Okay, so basically, just going to put this card 
makes little noises. <laughs> it's cute. All right, now layer that, if I can, right on top of the other one. And we need to press down a little bit. Make sure that your edges are all pressed down because they are the hardest to get your edges. And you can see a little bit of paint oozing out from the side so you know that you've got all your edges. And down here, make sure that it's all oozing out then you know that you've got all those little corners. And then a little bit of pressure in the middle like that. Okay, now I like to drag up so that I get more of a linear pattern that way but you can do it the other way as well if you want to. Alright, let's See if I can grab the end without lifting both of them up at the same time. Ready? Ta-da! Okay, I'll put that one there so you can see them both. How gorgeous is that? And I'm just going to clean these sides off so you can see where the card finishes. Now if you need to touch a little few areas up, you can do that. Now if you've missed a corner, I've missed a little bit up here, you can certainly go ahead and fix those up. Ah, oh, let's see, I might. And you can match the colours, you've got a little bit of colour left, you can pop a little bit of the, the light blue or aqua there like that. And what else do we need? A little bit of the lime. Now I'm just waiting while these cells pop up while I do this. A little bit of lime just there. Doesn't have to match exactly, but you might as well, if you've got the colours, you might as well try and match them up a little bit. And a little bit of white. There in the middle of those two. So see what I mean about putting one card or one uh, canvas on top of the other? You're actually getting two lovely pieces of art. Some people I've seen just lay down a piece of paper, or maybe they can use them as skins, I'm not sure what they do with them, but they just lay down the paper and put all the paint on the paper and then squash their canvas into it. And then you've got a lovely canvas, which is great. But then what do you do with all the other paint that's on this on this piece of paper? Maybe they use it for jewellery? I don't know. But I would prefer to have, personally, have two matching pieces of art. And uh, you can frame them both, can't you? These cards are lovely to frame. No reason why you can't. Just finish touching up this little area here. And then I'll give it a bit of a torch. See if there's anything that wants to come up. I think the one, the original one that was this one, that was down first, it's got more cells. I'm just trying to blend this a little bit here. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now where's my torch? both going in the same direction or have I flipped one? can't remember. Now I think they're going the other way aren't they? These points are up here towards me. I don't know, let me have a look at it from your side. I'm not sure now which way they go. I think maybe they go around the other way. Like that. These two here must have been on those two there. Those bits there must have been there. So I think that's the way they go. I think when I lifted it up, I must have flipped it over somehow. Bring it a bit closer together. All right. Let's do a real quick torching. 
Don't need to do any here. I would like to just do some up around there a little bit. I don't know whether we'll get any cells. Oh yeah, we are. A little bit over here. As I said, we don't need too much. It doesn't have to be all cells. It's nice to have a little bit of negative space somewhere for your eye to rest. Okay, that's enough. I don't want to overdo it. You can see how there's been a lot more come up over here where it was a bit plain. We've got a few more here and just on the very edges here where it didn't have very much. And we'll try up here because there's not much there either on that little corner. Okay, we'll leave it like that. There's a few coming up there and they will continue to grow. So, what do you think? Do you like that? Love those. And I just wanted that little pop of lime, as you can see, against all the blues. I think that's really pretty. Otherwise, it's just too blue, you know? It's just nice to have that little bit of brightness showing through all the blues. Right, all right, let's take you in for a close-up. I can get my gloves off. Okay, what do you think? So if you're one of these people that has trouble getting cells, uh, maybe have a go at dipping. Uh, depending on which medium you use, you will get different results. Uh, if you remember my purple, pink and aqua dip, it was a lot thicker mix. It was my glue and water mix. This one's got Floetrol glue and water. Um, so the Floetrol automatically gives you the little tiny, tiny cells. So you can see that in these pores, those really tiny little ones. Uh, but they're more like little bubbles. So that's what you get with a Floetrol mix. So maybe experiment, see what you like, see what you don't like. We have got some bigger cells popping through here as well. The coconut milk hair serum will also give you a different effect. Also pretty cells, but just different. So um, yeah, have a play around, experiment. Join the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group. Show me what you've done. I'd love to see them. Please um, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can see all my videos that I do for you guys. All right, and that will be this one done and dusted. I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.